Welcome to the March edition of NTV. I'm Sharon Bennett. And I'm Terry Kakita with the Environment, Health, and Safety Division, which will be moving here to the 12th floor of the 1111 3rd Avenue building in a few months. Right now, 157 City Light employees work in this building next to the downtown City Light headquarters. Staff are moving into and out of this building as we work towards locating some customer contact staff closer to our customers. Sharon, the safety, health, and wellness staff will be joining us here when the offices are finished and the division completes its merge. Space is always an issue here at City Light, and moving some employees here has eased the crunch at the City Light building. But you know, Terry, it wasn't always that way. The City Light building was built in 1932 and originally occupied just the first two stories. Plans approved in 1929 called for a 26-story modern Art Deco building but the depression sent revenues plunging, so only two stories were completed. The third through ninth floors were added in 1952 and for many years were called the tower. A variety of permanent solutions for bringing all downtown City Light employees and all city employees together have been considered, but meanwhile, nothing is definite. Environmental activities gained momentum here at City Light in the 1970s and the Environmental Affairs Division was created in 1982. City Light has a commitment to respect, restore, and enhance the natural environment in which we operate. The October reorganization created the new Environment, Health, and Safety Division, which is directed by Kierville Skinnerland. Well, I think there's going to be a lot of benefits for the utility. In the short time that we've actually existed as a division, we've seen a lot of opportunities come from having a closer collaboration between the two groups and, and the chance to work a little bit closer together. I think a lot of the, you know, in a lot of ways, the mission of the two groups is really quite similar. Both the old Environmental Affairs Division and the Safety, Health, and Wellness Unit, in terms of their general mission, are responsible for compliance with regulations, both federal regulations and state regulations. So I think, in that sense, coming together, you know, there's a lot of common, um, common good that can come from from that shared mission. There's some overlap too in terms of the regulations that deal with toxics and hazardous waste. So in that way, I think there'll be some opportunities for a really close working relationship between the toxics unit and the safety, health, and wellness unit. Another issue is that the environmental staff have had a lot of expertise and experience in developing and implementing programs for regulatory compliance. And I think that this experience can be shared with the safety, health, and wellness unit as they begin to upgrade and overhaul our, our safety and health programs. Also, the utility really does have a pretty good track record in the environmental arena, and I think it's time that we bring our safety and health programs up to the same standard. I personally am really excited about the challenge and the opportunity um, brought about by bringing these two groups together, and I know that um, Dolores and, and her staff share this commitment to improving the program, so I think you'll see us making a lot of strides in the coming year. We'll keep you updated with developments from this new division, as well as other areas in the utility where like functions and operations are being placed together. Since facilities are so important here at the utility and things are constantly changing, the transition of the First Hill substation into a first-class training facility is something to be proud of. The substation was taken out of use in the early 70s and was slated to be sold to Seattle University. When that deal fell through, the idea to turn it into a training facility for apprentices began. I would say that this facility was a vision of the field, the electricians here at City Light. Uh, both constructors and cable splicers got together, uh, people who were interested in training apprentices, and started talking together about the need for a facility where we could really train our apprentices to be the best apprentices around. And they, I th they looked all over and they ended up up here at this, what was an abandoned substation. And they called me up on the phone and said, we found the perfect place. So they sent me, you know, I came up with them and uh, it was, all it was was concrete walls and concrete floors and holes in the concrete floors. No heat, no anything. And so they were very excited about it and, and this is Mike Knudsen and Daryl Greening. Mike is the constructor and Daryl is the cable splicer. And so after a while I began to catch the fever. Training consoles, work areas and classrooms give apprentices a place to learn and practice their trades. Making this a first class facility was no small job, says Tom Parks. Everybody feels really good about it because we started off with uh, just a, a big concrete box, just a, just an empty, dark 
old abandoned substation and uh, ended up with a with a pretty nice facility, I think. And it's uh, they've they've allowed us to uh, whoever started on it pretty well uh, stayed on it, and uh, it's it's been rewarding to see it all come together. As the finishing touches were completed, a group was on hand to witness the transformation into a training facility. Our apprentices can now look forward to a place to call home. The conference rooms can also be used by other units throughout the utility and may be reserved by calling the apprenticeship office at 386-1603. March 1st was the date for the latest snow survey over the Skagit. NTV videographer Tony Hopkins and photographer Dave Free went along. Although the pictures are pretty, the news is not good. Snowpack is about 61% of normal. That's down from the February survey. Soil moisture also declined. City Light has had to purchase power to keep Ross Reservoir from draining below safe levels necessary to protect the fishery in Ross Lake. And power prices are higher. This has led to a change in City Light's rate proposal announced in a news conference March 8th. February was a dismal month for hydroelectric power. We'll show what that lack of water means in terms of City Light's power supply, the region's power supply, and dollars. The permanent rate increase will be larger than previously predicted, and we won't be getting rid of the drought surcharge unless the water situation improves dramatically. Surplus sales often help our financial pictures, but this year wholesale revenues are projected to be $43 million lower than anticipated. In these days of increased competition, one of our goals is to become a more customer-driven utility. And you know, Terry, one of the first things I heard Roberta say when she arrived is that we want to delight our customers and exceed their expectations. Oh, the Residential Customer Service Satisfaction Survey is an important way to judge how we're doing and set service goals in this process of continuous improvement. Julie Nelson of Consumer Research and Evaluation talked to employees about the survey and what it means to us. I think the thing that's most important is for employees really to relate it to their own jobs. That We talk a lot about continuous improvement and customer service and improving customer service, but unless people really relate it to their own jobs, it's not going to be improved. So I would like for every employee here to, at City Light to think about ways that they personally can improve customer service and to really incorporate as many employees as possible into this improvement process. 400 customers were surveyed by telephone, rating City Light on reliability, billing and account service, conservation programs, and overall customer service. The survey recommendations include focusing improvement in the areas of rates, outages, street lights, phone service, and conservation. Improving overall communication is also a part of the plan, and results will continue to be shared with employees and customers. A tradition of providing prompt and efficient customer service continues with Seattle City Light's appliance repair staff. The utility has provided this service since 1912, and the yellow vans now visit about 600 residential and commercial customers a week. They rolled into the home show early in March to highlight the service to customers. With today's emphasis on environmental concerns come new regulations for keeping CFCs from escaping into the atmosphere. Our appliance repair was at the forefront of providing this service. Uh, the refrigerant out of these units, which averages 10 to 14 pounds of refrigerant, was just dumped right in the atmosphere with no concern as to any of its damaging effects. And then they started getting the laws together to uh, make it unlawful for doing that because of the ozone depletion. So prior to the law being enacted, we actually got this recovery reclaim machine that will actually recover the refrigerant and clean it for possible reuse. A few years back, you may have heard City Light was considering getting out of the appliance repair business. But after further review, it was decided to keep this service. It's one that's really valued by our customers. Sharon, I know our NTV staff is always on the lookout for stories from different work groups throughout the utility. That's right, Terry. We'd like to share these with all City Light employees, but we can't cover things we don't know about. So let us know what you're working on that might make a good story for NTV. Give us a call at 684-3112 or write NTV, room 809, City Light Building. Well, that wraps up this edition of NTV. 
This is the sixth issue of our news video magazine, and you might have missed one. If so, they are available for you to borrow. So give us a call at 684-3112, and we'll send one out for you to view. You can take it home or view it at work, and just return it to us when you're done. We'll see you next month. For NTV, I'm Terry Kakita. And I'm Sharon Bennett. Bye-bye.